All right, so we're still going, we're still feeding. Welcome to the next part of this feeding and tour collection and updates video. This one, I don't know if we're going to see. It's generally out um, most of the time, but I moved its enclosure and it went down into a burrow that it's got in the substrate right underneath that cork bark. And it's got it all webbed up in a tunnel. This tarantula is generally, genuinely out on the cork bark, but like I said, I moved its enclosure and it retreated since it's got itself a new burrow now. Unfortunately, I can't uh, get those yellow bands on the ankles on camera, but um, I'm going to try to maybe entice it out with a small cricket. This guy, you may or may not know, escaped the night that I got it because the ventilation holes were too large. And I looked for three days for it, could not find it. I had just about given up hope and I walked in the kitchen and the damn thing was in the sink. It's not unusual to see a spider in your house, but I saw the yellow bands on its feet and that's what told me that it was my P. Ornata and not one of my uh, common house spiders. Everyone keeps telling me that I, I will grow to love these things. I got this instead of a, the uh, Pisolotheria rufalata that I ordered. The same people that sold me the uh, Brachypelma homori as a Brachypelma smithy. And here comes the Ornata. I could change up the light angle just a little bit. And rely on that cricket to twitch again. Because the spider's moving. You still can't see the yellow bands on the feet. Here it comes. Another reason I hate crickets is they're a lot more stubborn and harder to steer sometimes than uh, a roach. You can kind of see those yellow bands down in there, which is one dead giveaway that it is a P or not a. Come on. I know it's hungry because it was reacting. Now you can definitely see those yellow bands. Here it comes. Wow. I don't know which one of these animals is slower and dumber, the tarantula or the cricket. No, I don't mean that. This is the first cricket it's ever eaten, so that's why it's kind of feeling out its vibrations to figure out whether it's prey or not. This one actually has not eaten for me in a while. It molted, oh, a month ago maybe. Um, it's probably a good two inch spider. I take that back, not two, more like an inch and a half. But it did molt for me after I recaptured it and fixed the two large ventilation holes. After I fixed those things. It molted, and unfortunately, it um, lost the darn cricket. Well, I see it. Crickets are buttheads, I tell you. I just don't love crickets as feeders. But we're hoping for a takedown. This is a lot of work and a lot of time for one tarantula. But it being a pokey, I wanted you guys to see it. I don't think it's going to show much more than that, probably because of the light. But rest assured that it will eat that cricket and it will continue to grow. And when it gets a little less skittish, I'll get more video of it. Sorry I bored you with that one. Let's move on to the next one.
So this next tarantula is another gorgeous species, but at this point, come on, I mean, what tarantula is not gorgeous, but in its own right? This is the second of the Bonatinos that I was telling you about. I misspoke in the last video when I said Bonapelma, I believe. I don't have editing uh, prowess to throw the text in there when I misquote, so I fix it later. This is my Bonatina cyanofemur. This one molted probably a week and a half ago. I don't know. It's gone for several days, and um, when I came back, it had molted. I have no idea how long the molt had been in there. But, um, let's look at some of those gorgeous fiery reds you can see there. I want to try to get it out if I can get this damn tripod to cooperate again. So I'm going to put a pretty beat up looking male cricket in there and hope that it will come out and feed on it and show us how beautiful it is. This one, in my experience so far, has been um, quite docile. I've been able to um, just tickle it out of where it is at there. And it'll come out and start walking around. It actually did a bit of a walkabout on my hand one day. And I'd like to get it out so you guys can see it. And I don't want to have to do it the hard way, so we're going to try to do it the easy way. Look at that. Unfortunately, unless it backs out the other side, we're not going to get a great look at this tarantula. But it is a gorgeous species. This is the Mexican blue femur. Like I said, the Bonatina cyanofemur, not Bonapelma. hoping it will back out of the hole or come out and do a happy dance or something. But look at those colors, guys. I just wish you could see the femurs. Wow, look at that happy dance. Now that's some rump shaking going on right there. Here it comes. Wow, that's gorgeous. Look at the colors on this freaking thing, guys. I mean, in the camera just cannot convey to the to your eye and your brain the colors on this thing from what I've seen with my own eyes but man what a gorgeous species I am not regretting getting this one because like I said it's quite docile and it's gorgeous this is a Mexican species this is another one like the uh, Guatemalan tiger rump that is a smaller New World species and not quite sure if these are a dwarf, but they are on the smaller side with females getting around four and a half inches or so. Um, it's not um, written in stone, so don't quote me on that, but I'm thinking that that's about what size. Of course, males being a bit smaller. But they are definitely beautiful and colorful. I'd like for it to do some more happy dance for us. Maybe I will pause and come back. Hold on. Now here we go with some of that rump shaking. Too bad it's not happening out in the open, but it's still very interesting to watch this happy dance, as they call it. There's a couple of speculations there, and they actually... But when they do the happy dance, they're laying down web. Most of you already know that, but they have different functions for a different web that they lay down. Some of them will web a, a perimeter around the prey, and that is believed to kind of just thwart off any scavengers. They, you know, ants or something will get stuck in the webbing. Uh, they also will, as this one is doing, once the prey they're sure is immobilized, they will lay it down. And then just start webbing it up into a nice little packet. Wow, where'd the focus go there? And then turn around and pick it up and just slurp all the juice out. 
because unlike scorpions, these guys don't chew up their food, so they liquefy it and slurp it up. I want to give you guys the best view I can of this tarantula, but it's going to be bashful. I'll try to catch it out sometime and show it to you better, but I don't want to disturb it while it's eating, so we will move on. I lied, guys. I'm still trying to give you some better looks at this darn spider. It's just so beautiful. So I guess I'll just make this the end of part whatever this is. Maybe this spider will do some rump shaking for us as I do my outro once again. And say be looking for more feedings because I still got a few more to feed. And I'm hoping to have some pretty epic uh, takedowns out of the ones that I've got left to feed. I'm not going to say any more about you know what to do if you like this video because you already know what to do. So... Be looking for the next video coming soon.